Hi, I'm Kyle Downs and today I'll be talking to you about May Alive motion tracking. Full 3D motion tracking is something I was trying to figure out how to do for a while now. You can do 2D motion tracking in After Effects and Shake, but that's kind of limiting to what you can do. A while ago I discovered May Alive, which I'm surprised there's very little resources for it on the internet. The Maya help files are actually extremely useful for Maya Live. They step you through it quite well. So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to do some basic motion tracking with Maya Live. Yeah, okay, the first thing we have to do is to make sure Maya Live is actually loaded into Maya. You'll see it's not there in the menus preset. So we have to go settings and preferences, plugin manager, and find Maya Live in the plugins. Check that and close the window. Now you can bring up the May Alive menu set and you have to go Scene, New Match Move. This will bring up, you'll see a camera there with an image plane attached to it. Okay, click Browse next to Full Res Images to load in your image sequence. And now when you scrub through the, the time slider you should see the image sequence will play on the image plane for the camera. Now click this big green button, Ready to Track and confirm. Now we'll change the, the menu here from setup to track which should bring up the, the windows that you need to start your tracking. Now click this uh, green button here and then click create which will create a new track point. Uh, you want to move the track point into a spot that's well defined from the rest of the, the video and last for the full length of the video preferably. Now this uh, smaller section on the track point is the actual point of the video that Maya will try to match the pixels to. The outer section is the search area where it will actually look for these. Now we can change the tracking direction to forward, backward or bi-directional which will track in that direction on the video depending on if you can't get a good track from one direction you can try backwards or from the centre out. Now click start track and it will bring up another window in front which will show exactly what it's tracking at the moment. And you'll see it will have put a heap of keyframes frames on the time slider there for that track point. Now often the track will have uh, stopped at a certain frame. You can see here it's stopped at frame 74 which means May has lost its point where it is. Uh, most of the time you can just go to that frame and start track again and it should, uh, it should work out fine. Now if you select the shot camera one window and scrub back and forward you should see that the track point sticks to the image like it's actually in that point in space. If it looks fine to you that should be good. If you don't like it you can start again and try tracking backwards. Okay I've jumped forward here. I've done nine track points by now. I think you should be able to figure out how to do the rest yourself. You preferably want a, about nine or ten track points to get a nice uh, nice track. This window on the right here shows the accuracy of your tracking data. Green is for a good track. Red is when there's something you should worry about. Before you want to actually solve a track you want to make sure that this bottom bar, the total, is is uh, generally green. It's a bit red towards the end there, but um, everything, all the track points seem to have tracked well. Okay, now you want to change the menu from track to solve. You'll see there should be initial one in this uh, window here. Just click solve for now and it should start loading through. It'll create a 3D solution for the camera. Now if you go into your perspective view, you scrub back and forward through the time slider, you should see the camera moves around as you would have originally moved the camera when you were filming the video footage. Have a look at the locators that have appeared and you should be able to estimate that they're in about the right spot as what the points were in the original scene that you filmed. If everything looks good, uh, delete that solution RF and we're going to start to refine our track. And now we're going to change the menu here from solve to survey, which is the checkbox just under the camera there. We're going to select all of the points that are on the table that we tracked. You might have to scrub through the video to see all of them. And we're going to change this constraint type to plane and click create. This will create a blue plane on your the plane of your scene. And what this will do is constrain those points to only appear in line with that plane. We want to also make sure that registration only is checked.
and now if we do a solve we'll see that all the points are on the plane but it's kind of shrunk the entire thing down to a single point around the origin which is obviously no good so what we want to do next is create a distance constraint this will force two points in the scene a certain distance apart so go back to survey we'll change the constraint type to distance now we're going to select two points uh, it doesn't matter which ones and we'll set a distance of two units and we'll set a distance of four units apart this will force them four units of space apart in the scene we'll uncheck registration only for this one and now we'll try another solve here and that all looks fine it hasn't shrunk the scene down and those points are constrained to the plane however you'll see that everything is kind of moved off the center of origin here and next up we'll try a point constraint so select one of these points here change the constraint type to point and click create now we'll leave the x y and z axes as zero because we want to constrain that point to the origin which should center our scene well now if we go back to solve and try another solve and there we go that's all looking good the scene is centered around the origin everything's lined up well Now if you scrub through the playback head you'll see that the grid kind of sticks to the table like it's actually on the table which is obviously what we want here. So now we'll just try, we'll create a cube, put it on the, uh, on the grid and we'll see what it looks like. Scrub through the playback head and look at that you've got a 3D cube sticking to your table and of course from here you can uh, create a used background material on the plane give it a bit of lighting to match the scene and you should be able to integrate that pretty well into the scene use After Effects to composite the uh, the rendered image sequence and it should look good